Welcome to episode 14, part 2 of Mitten on Mitten. There's 92 days till I'm back, so let's see what I've been up to. In Loose Threads this week, um, as I mentioned, this is part 2 of episode 14. Part 1 is the interview that I did with um, Ken, the homestead hobbyist. And you can find the episode on iTunes or up on uh, my YouTube channel, The Mitten on Mitten. And I uh, hope you enjoy it. It's rather lengthy, so I thought I'd uh, go ahead and do the part two, which is uh, a regular um, episode, just in case that was uh, a little bit too much for any one sitting or um, if you really just wanted to um, hear what we normally talk about. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. And that's it for Loose Threads. What's fit in the mitten this week? Well, it's all about the socks. Um, it's been way too warm to wear a sweater, or and since I've been on vacation, um, I didn't need to use the Jared Flood Gainsey scarf um, as a pillow or shawl in the office. Um, so it's all about the socks, and I've just been going through them uh, pair by pair, and I'm pretty happy that I have more than five pairs, because otherwise I'd be washing my socks every single night and hoping they would dry in the morning. Um, so that's what's been fitting. Really nice, comfortable, perfectly fitting hand knit socks. You gotta love that. What have I been knitting? Well, I've been knitting the uh, Rhinebeck scarf attempt number <laughs> Rhinebeck scarf. I've been knitting the Rhinebeck sweater attempt number three, and uh, I've made some progress on it and feeling so far so good about it. I don't want to make any prop promises or jinx myself or anything. Um, so just taking it one stitch at a time and we'll see how it turns out. Um, uh, I don't have a good feeling about it at this point, but you know, I had a good feeling about the last one when it got to this point and I was totally wrong. So um, hopefully I'll be totally wrong again and my not having a good feeling will turn out to be having a good feeling, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, so that's what I've been knitting. What have I been spinning? Well, I got a ride out to the, um, I got a ride out to Rhinebeck, woohoo, uh, where my guild had a spin in at the wool room. We did a bit of a clean up on the wool room, some planted uh, some of the dying plants. Um, flowers and, and bushes and such that one uses in dying. Uh, we plant those out there every, every year. And uh, you can stop by and see them at Rhinebeck. Um, and then we had a big spin-in with uh, raffles and everything. So I brought my spinning wheel and uh, the hip strings buoy beacon. And I spun up gosh, almost two ounces of it. So I'm almost done with the beacon and it it's coming out very consistent. Um, a nice medium single. Um, so I've got my bulky, I've been doing lace weight and this one's medium. So I'm feeling better about being able to at least do three different sizes of uh, singles um, that are pretty much consistent and, and and I'm really happy about that. You know, it's taken a lot of, a lot of practice to get there, um, and I feel really good about uh, how it looks, and uh, the bobbin is nice and evenly filled. So that's what I've been spinning, uh, and I think it looks pretty good. What have I finished? Well, I didn't finish anything. Um, you know, I finished something last week. Wasn't that good enough? No, just kidding. Uh, you know, since I've been working on, I only worked on the sweater and uh, 
the hip strings buoy beacon, um, there's still ways to go, and that's fine. I'm I'm feeling I'm not feeling pressured by the spinning. I'm starting to feel a little bit 92 days, you know, a little bit pressured with the sweater, uh, but hopefully that'll go well and um, and we'll get that done in time. Oh dear, I really hope so. Um, so that's that's what's finished. And now a word not from a sponsor. Hip Strings brings together modern support spindles, fiber, and the spinners who love them. With custom blends inspired by the coast of Maine to their cocktail hour collection inspired by, well, being parents, working, life in general, Hip Strings offers rich saturated colors and fiber blends to quench your spinner's thirst. Stop by and visit them at hipstrings.com for the perfect summertime porch spinning companion. In stash up down this week, um, stash up, woohoo! Um, so as I mentioned, I went out to Rhinebeck and uh, our guild was there, and we have a uh, we do a potluck and do raffles and uh, a silent auction. So, and I went with um, my friend, the one who was going to be bringing me the roving from Pearl, her sheep. Um, and it's beautiful. It's this silvery blue-gray. Um, you can actually, I showed it on the, um, on the interview when um, Mr. Homestead Hobbyist was uh, getting his groceries, um, <laughs> which happened because... We ran so late doing the interview, but we were having so much fun. Um, but anyway, uh, so um, several pounds of roving, um, which has got a really great staple length and is just gorgeous, and a Rom Romney Rambouillet cross chocolate um, fleece. Uh, I'd say it's about five pounds or so, and um, some four ounce uh, balls of roving, um, some blue face luster, camel, and one bag is labeled, who knows, um, but it felt really soft and, and the colors are nice. The, they're uh, silver gray and uh, tan and cream. So I think I'm gonna really enjoy playing with those. And um, a book by Stephanie Pearl McPhee, The Free Range Knitter, which I understand is a really good book. I've, I've read one or two of her books and uh, I've enjoyed them. Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading this one as well. So big stash up this week, like over eight pounds of stash up. And um, it should keep me occupied for a really, really long time. And I'm very happy about that. So yay! In where I want to be this week, um, well, it's going to be a work and home, home and work kind of week. Uh, I think they're going to be throwing in an extra town board meeting, so I will have but just the one meeting night, so that'll be a nice relief not to have to do um, meetings every night. So, but other than that, it's just going to be work and home, home and work, and um get my get my toe back into doing the commute because I've had off for two weeks um, for the garden tour and for recovering from the garden tour so that's uh, oh actually that's where I'll be uh, where I want to be working home home and work so I guess it works for uh, <laughs> I guess it works for both this week um, it, I'm Basically, once I take two weeks off, I'm kind of ready to go back to um, go back to work. It's a nice distraction from the day. It's a nice um, bit of relaxation being on the train and uh, knitting in the morning. I know it, it can be a grind and everything, and um, it can be a, a difficult commute sometimes, but it's also um, 
it's also some me time for knitting and and taking a nap and just uh, uh, a little bit of clear my head time before I get to my destination. So as difficult as it is, um, I have found the silver lining for it and I cling to it dearly. Um, so that's where I'll be as well as where I want to be. In grabby paws this week, um, aside from pretty much everything in Ken's living room, I'm good. Um, getting as much roving and the, the Romney Rambouillet fleece, which was actually washed um, this weekend, has kind of made me say that I'm, I'm good. I don't need to shop or anything for the week. Um, I'm still staring at the boxes and bags and figuring out where I'm going to uh, put them in the stash so they will uh, be well preserved and, and kept safely. But I, I really don't uh, don't need anything, not looking for anything. I'm kind of on uh, shopping overload. Even though I didn't spend a lot of money because, because um, you know, it was gifted and and I won it in the raffle and and the silent auction um, is is pretty low. It's just it's a it's a contribution to the to the guild. Um, so, which is all really wonderful and fantastic. Um, but it uh, it made my grabby paws. Uh, go back in my pockets. I'm sure they'll be out again next week, but uh, today, no, I'm good. Don't need grabby paws. Uh, can take a, a little bit of time off from that. For dough this week, um, it was a spinning dough. I was spinning the hip strings. Now, on my bottom I had just maybe an inch or two of the hip strings buoy and um, the rest of the bobbin was empty so I'm spinning along lovely and uh, the spin is going fine and then I noticed that that little bump on the bobbin that I had of the single had um, well my, my little bump kind of flattened out and uh, it spread out across the entire bobbin, and it was all loose and messy and just not pretty at all. Um, so that was my dough, because I didn't pay attention and switch the single to the next hook on the flyer. So what I did was I unwound the single off the flyer and butterfly butterflied it onto my fingers, and uh, then really prettily... Um, put it back onto the bobbin so it wouldn't be messed up. Previously I've gone ahead and when that happens then the single spreads out down the length of the bobbin and it gets all loose. I've gone ahead and um, continued to spin and just covered it up. But what I've found is that when I go to ply or when I go to just take the single off of the bobbin, um, those points where the newly spun yarn goes around that loose yarn that I've left there, uh, the loose single that I've left there, it gets um, knotted or tied and twisted in some way because there's that twist that I'm putting into the single and it makes it really difficult to um, get it off the bobbin. So that was my dough for the week. It was very minor and I'm really happy about that. And um, knock on wood. Uh, that will be uh, as bad as it gets. No, I'm not even going to say it. Because last time I said it, we all know what happened. That's why we have sweater number three. Okay, so that's it for dough. So finally, just to wrap things up for the week, um, I wanted to mention the knit-along uh, that I'm having on the Mitten on Mitten on the Ravelry group. Um, we're going to be doing a knit-along of Ken's um, Manly Fingerless Mitts. I'll put a thread up for it. Um, I think he called them the Lesbian Fingerless Mitts, but then when I went and looked up the pattern, it was Manly Fingerness, 
fingerless mitts. Um, they're really pretty. The, the lace open work is really nice. It's got a, a, a beautiful chevron open work pattern for it. And as he mentioned in the interview, it does give a nice cushion um, for your wrist if you use them um, in the office or at home when you're typing. Um, it's it, They're really comfortable. Um, so I hope everybody has an opportunity to uh, knit along. We'll be starting the knit along um, this coming Wednesday. And if I have my calendar up, what is it? You know, he was looking for his calendar during the interview. I'm looking for my calendar during the podcast. I guess they, these are things that simply go missing every now and again. Okay, but the knit along is going to start on July 13th, and it will go through, well, 12 or fingerless myths. So let's say it'll go through uh, August 31st. And uh, you don't have to use the Homestead Hobbyist yarn to participate. You can use um, any, any yarn that you have made or purchased. Um, we're not biased. Um, so I hope you participate, and I can't wait to see everybody's pictures of their fingerless mitts. Um, it's, a, it's a fun, quick knit, and uh, I, I'm just dying to see all the, all the fingerless gloves there, and uh, hopefully, oh, one more thing to wear to Rhinebeck. Can't beat that now, can you? So there you have it. There it is. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye.